This is a minimally edited series where I talk about the vignettes in biology that make me happy. If you want the highly edited stuff, check out the main channel. I want to talk a little bit about what inspired me to start this series. I had been having a terrible week that just refused to get better, when I was reminded of what childlike wonder felt like. I was on a field trip with my students to see a very impressive piece of machinery, the TEM. The TEM, or Transmission Electron Microscope, is a massive microscope in the dark basement of the research facility, in a special room that is vibrationally isolated, locked in a Faraday cage to block interfering electromagnetic radiation. This is a microscope that is used quite often in the fields of biology as you are able to get atomic resolution images of biological samples without the need for crystallization. Electron microscopy is used to get pictures like this or this, beautiful snapshots of biological structures, potentially down to the atom. When it comes to taking images of samples as small as a bacterium, you have to be selective with what instrumentation you use. The theoretical maximum resolution on an image depends in part on the wavelength of the light that you use. For visible light, this ranges between about 300 to 800 nanometers. For comparison, one E. coli is about 2000 nanometers long. Which basically means, if you're interested in having the resolving power to visualize E. coli, visible light is perfectly fine because your light has a smaller wavelength than the thing you're trying to resolve. Now, if you wanted to zoom in and enhance on the membrane of a bacteria, you have to get tricky. You can no longer rely on visible light because the individual photons of visible light are too big to resolve detail at that level. What scientists realized is that while visible light was too big, another wavelength containing particle could be used instead. The electron. Electrons do have a wavelength and through the magic of physics we've learned that the wavelength of an electron is dependent on its momentum. The slower an electron, the larger its wavelength. Which means, if you hypothetically built a tube that could fire electrons super fast, you could get electrons with wavelengths so small they are the size of individual atoms. With this in mind, the electron microscope was built. A huge room-sized piece of equipment that has the power to blast a sample with electrons and capture the shadow of that structure. And with high enough, high-speed electrons smashing your sample, you can get atomic resolution images of whatever it is you're trying to look at. Atomic. Level. We grow up a good percentage of our education not really knowing what atoms look like. I mean, we kind of do from models, right? The Bohr model, for instance. But the Bohr model is just that. A model. An idea. A picture that someone drew. But images generated from TEMs, they're real. Actual pictures that contain resolvable instances of individual atoms that are captured in a way not dramatically different than how your camera does it. Just a lot fancier. The students loved learning about the TEM. One of them exclaimed that it was always their childhood dream to be able to see an atom. So, of course, they took a selfie with the microscope and the data it produced. It was a really fun experience, one I didn't know I needed through a terrible storm of bad news. Seeing their faces light up and ask questions about the TEM made me feel good, happy, hopeful even. And it's the kind of simple joy that I haven't really felt in a while, not since undergraduate. Of course, the main channel content is biology that I love, but I spend a lot more time crafting narratives and trying to make those videos entertaining. Sometimes it's okay to just gush about something that's cool because it's cool. It's cool to see atoms. There's no story I have to think about, no drama, no higher thought. It's a dream that even a child can aspire to have. It's uncomplicated, but undeniably something that has the potential to bring so much joy. And that's it. That's all I have. I hope I can use this second channel as a place to make content that is more spur of the moment. Maybe in the future, when I'm feeling a little down, I can cheer myself up by sharing something about the science that I've grown to love so much.